To me, richness doesn't come in what you have as far as money and things. Richness is within and surrounding people you spend your time with. And as far as I am concerned, I'm the richest person I know. I just don't have any money. But I live in one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. I'm with the people who love me the most. And I get to do this art form that I've come up, I've started doing in the last four years. And it's just opened my eyes to so many different things. And it was all inspired by Burning Man. trained arborist, uh, a tree surgeon, and I've had my own business for the last 13 years. My job is to keep the trees up, not cut them down. Because of the economy, when we had this depression we were in, it's basically killed nine out of 10 small tree businesses because of the um, economy. Nobody wants to spend any money on their trees if they don't have to. Unless the tree has fallen down, they don't want to deal with it. So people like myself have been run out of business. And that's how I started sewing. And it was just a coincidence because I was making costumes for myself. And I had decided to make myself a coat. And I made myself a very nice coat. And as I was finishing it, the first person that came over to visit me said, What is that? And I said, That's my royal robe because I had realized when I had put it on, it wasn't just a fur coat, it actually was a royal robe. And that's when I became king, as soon as I put on my royal robe. So the first person who came in said, I want one of those. And I said, well, it's gonna be four or $500 because it's expensive to make. And he said, no problem. He had me custom it so he could put his ball cap on and put the bill of his cap inside the head. So I have this little pocket here for him. And then uh, this is his coat. This is a very small town and not very, not the best place to sell this kind of stuff because it's not for the average person. The reason I opened the store was I do a lot of business online all over the world, but I don't have a good connection with my community. So I figured if I opened this store and was visible, the people that I want to connect with will come in. How'd you guys start this? This is crazy. Like we were just driving by from San Jose. Burning Man. Nice. Got too cold. <laughs> and then I had too many furry things, so I had to start making them for other people. That is awesome. Now I'm That's on my 200 coats I've made in four years. And then I've got all these people on tour, Tenacious D, Jack Black, and Kyle Gass. Oh, oh nice. Um, that is so All kinds cool. of people, all kinds of things, craziness. This guy was one of my fastest art cars yet. And I think it took me um, about 40 hours to make this guy. Jiffy the Jolly Chimp was created in the 50s and mass produced, I think it came out of Japan, and it was a automatron. It was a battery powered toy that when you turned it on, he clapped his cymbals together all crazy. And um, I, this year I'm in a funny mood and I decided I wanted to make the most annoying thing I could think of. And from my childhood, this, this toy represented the most annoying thing I could think of. And when I realized that was what I wanted to do, it all just came to me on how easy it would be to make. and. Uh, and this is what's come of it. I'm pretty happy with it. 
I'm really happy with it. It represents me in so many ways. <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> California right now and we need to go to northern Nevada the next state over and it can take us between 10 to 14 hours depending on how we've uh, packed the load and how the trailer is pulling or how the, the conditions of the road are like traffic and stuff. Everyone calls Burning Man home. If you're a burner, Burning Man is your home. Spend a week to two weeks there, it's our home, and we always want to go home, and we only have the option to go home this time of year. We can always go to the desert and be there at home alone, but it's not really home if the city's not there. The city's what makes it home, and we make the city. I think that Burning Man is like the Louvre of underground art of today. It's, it's, the, it's got the best of the best of the underground artists all coming together. It's not utopia. It's just a really cool place to go have a good time, and it's what you make it. If you go there and be an asshole, you're going to meet a lot of assholes. But if you go there with an open heart and good intentions, you're going to meet a lot of the same kind of people. Yay! Yay! Woo! A source of life! Water! We have succeeded in our last mission. Now it's just to get there. And you can almost see it. Home again! Nice to be back.
secret. fist bump. This is my secret fist bump that me and my college friends came up with on a road trip. Okay, I'll be the rocket ship. So when we, after we fist bump, you go up and make a rocket ship noise. Like this? Uh huh. And I'll do the ten. Yeah. Like that? Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> This is where they, there's, this is the furthest out part of the city, the, the last streets were on like G or H. It starts at A and, and they go as a clock from two o'clock as like a horseshoe to 10 o'clock. And I just wanted to show this area and show how big it is because when we come back later in the week, this is all gonna be full. All of the streets completely fill up and it becomes a huge city something like uh, three and a half four four miles by the same like three and a half or four miles and it's kind of a circle more than a square and it just fills up and we have our city for one week Of, of standards that you have to abide by, they say, and um, you have to look a certain way, and, and it's got to be good enough by their approval to be allowed to drive on the playa. I've had different, um, different kinds of approaches or responses from them with my cars through the years, and I definitely have gotten better with my cars, but one year they'll really like it, and then the next year they'll hate it and tell me not to bring it back. I um, actually have a, a bad back and I have a disabled uh, parking placard for the state of California and because I am disabled I am allowed to drive a vehicle without going through all their standards but I love to make my car something fun and funny so I just do it as an art car but I register as a handicap vehicle. His name is Jiffy, the incredibly annoying chimp. We are, we're second in line, we're almost out of here. We're so almost out of here. We'll be out of here before the guy in front of us because we're handicapped and we don't have to do all the criteria that they have to go through. But they appreciate that I dress up my vehicle and I'm not just a golf cart. And I do too, because I'd just be a golf cart and people would think I was the police or something. But instead, I'm a fun, annoying chimp that everybody has to smile at because it's so silly. And that right there, how many thousands or tens of thousands of smiles am I gonna create? What is that for the world? Something awesome, more smiles, cheer people up. See how we could do that every day in the real world. Tried to be nice. Tried to be nice long enough. Now I'm just gonna be me. Perfect. And uh, have fun. It's beautiful. Okay, I need to. As our population increased, so did our, our community grow up and mature. And as you mature, your mothers and fathers die. And we didn't have a place to reflect on that. The man represents a lot of things, a lot of joyous things, and, and often sometimes 
uh, sad things, but not enough. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't address the issues that our community was facing: young people committing suicide. You okay? No. Uh, mothers and fathers dying, and it just became a need that needed our community needed. Uh, in the outside world, we used to use churches, and now the churches are being replaced by uh, theme parks or shopping centers. So in our community, we have a lot of theme parks and we have a lot of shopping centers, but we didn't have a place to reflect. So this kind of it kind of fills that need. Okay. done so much work here since we were here last just the other day it's amazing how, what they're doing so much detail so amazing when it burns it is gonna burn like nothing you've ever seen all right one two three Sorry to steal your shade, but we're going to be on our way. That's a fun bike. Yes. Coming through. Getting taller and taller. <laughs> it's whatever. The spiral. The spiral. The spiral of life. <laughs> it is where spiral ends. <laughs> Thank you. I love it when people make me laugh. It's the, it's the best part of life is laughter. And when you can meet somebody who can make you laugh just right, it's golden time. It's the best time there is. Best time of life. This is an art representation of the Divine Feminine. It's a big, beautiful golden dress. So you get to climb up all the way to the top and you look like you're wearing a three-story dress and get to display your Divine Feminine inside. Put it on, yeah! One of my other alter egos. <laughs> this is Nookie Monster. This is the Nookie Monster. <laughs> Cookie Monster? <laughs> Cookie Monster's older brother. Perfect! Perfect. Is this like a big onesie? It's a onesie. Yeah, it's a onesie. <laughs> I'm so yeah. gonna wear this. It's great. <laughs> so ridiculous. It is, that's why I do it. I don't like boundaries. <laughs> I cover them. <laughs> with fur. I cover that. I cover boundaries with fur. Yep. I can just dance in it. Yeah. All day. I really get my All groove night. on. <laughs> Two. All day. All day. All day. All day. <laughs> Perfect. What happened? We got a flat tire. We, I don't know if it was too much weight on there or the tires were just old but it blew out and now it's um, stuck on there. We can't get the uh, nut off. It's, it's like rusted and then it's stripped out so we have to break the, the one nut off to be able to use it again. So that's what we're trying to do but we don't have the proper tools. Chisel all the way around. 
trying to get this bit right here. Break. Yeah, All right, right, we got it! He's a <laughs> <laughs> ah Now look at that hole. Yeah. You drove over something gnarly. No, I think maybe it might have hit hit the metal or something over here. Looks like it rubbed right here. It's very interesting. I like it. It's, it's strange. Everybody has such a different perspective or creativity. It's, it's a nice world. Uh, so I wrote another message to um, to King, and I and he probably thought I was a little bit crazy because I'm like, Have, do you know Calvin and Hobbes? I want to make this coat for my fiance. I want it to be like a royal robe, but like Hobbes. And I want it to light up, you know, what can you do? And I sent him different photos of his own coats to try and explain what I, what I wanted. And he created this and it was so exciting. I don't know, it's just an amazing robe. It's just so over, over the top. It's, <laughs> it's over the top. Um, and, you're, and he's not an over the top person. Yeah. Like I, really, yeah, dress pretty simply and just, I, I like to come out and party and have fun, but it's sort of not too much attention. But this is just so crazy. It's, uh, I don't know, I, I love it. <laughs> I think that's like the power of this place is just incredible. It just, if you want it, if you're open to it, you will change and you will heal and you will become a better person. And that's what I found on the playa this year was a new ego. I don't like the old one that I had. So I, I left it in the temple and it's gonna burn up. And my new ego has different priorities, not the ones that were fed to me throughout my life that was supposed to be my priorities or what my ego was supposed to, how my ego was supposed to be fed. Now I find that my ego is going to be fed through my art. And it's, you, you have an ego, you have to feed it. You have to be part of it. You can't just stick it in a corner and lock it up or feed it too much and be a jerk or more. So it's your choice to be who you are, and make your life what it is, and make your burn what it is, if that's what you want to do. So it's, not that, it's not that life is so short, it's that death is so f***ing long. <laughs> no, it's not, dude. It's, yeah. it's the same thing. Well, provided you can find me one person that's come back with a skill set. I think there's a lot of hippies out there uh, that say, I oh, have, I was... I have, Queen a great, I have a great story from a super redneck from Cave Junction, Oregon. Came right Drew, on back with a wind. Just jumped off a bridge, hit a rock, popped out his body. Yeah, 
how much? Well, just, uh, just a little taste. Just a little? Just a little taste. Nothing. Right. No ID. You want me to get it for you? You got ID? Hello. Hi, do you have your ID, hon? I'm bald. 12 to 2 every day. We are serving champagne. 2 to 4 every day. We're serving chutkis. Come back tomorrow or this afternoon. Bye. Wow. How's your broom going? Awesome. Easy. My incredibly annoying chimp is annoying everyone. Hi. Wow. Welcome to Champagne Lounge. Would you like a Thank shot you. in your mouth? Your camera's mouth. <laughs> You can, not yet, not yet, into the floor as you can. So you that are holding onto the ropes, this rope is just because you don't have handholds. Yeah. Don't hold, don't try to hold yourself okay. up with the rope. Okay. It's just to, just to keep your feet stabilized. But otherwise, you want to stick your, your noses right up these guys' butts, okay? This is when we come in and we have we let loose and have a good time and meet people and there's no there's no barriers. We all have something in common. We've come here to to see the man burn, to see all the art, to meet new people with common interests. But back in the real world or the other the other side, people aren't so interested in, in meeting each other. It seems like and, and are very closed in their own worlds and they. Um, for myself, like I don't, I don't go out of my way and go up and talk to people on the street. I um, maybe if there was something in common I had with them, I would. But in general, I keep to myself, and uh, most people do. For that reason, I don't meet that many people. And over the last 10 years, I've I've made more friends here on the playa than I have in my own state or in my own town that I live in. Now the sun is down and the nightlife begins. Everything changes. How's this? You look like the man. <laughs> the Robin Hood's gonna get some revenge. Girl oh, power. Circus, the whole city, that's just a big circus. You never know what you're gonna see. Big giant freak show. It's a completely different story. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. I, I feel like I'm dizzy, Wizzy. 
going light speed. Out of control. They're building a whole damn city there. Like, the no, it's um, it's uh, what is it? Wall Street. It's like a damn ghetto. I'm offended. It's Wall Street. Oh, it is Wall Street. I'm even more offended. It's tag on that. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the point. Yeah. My project is Burn Wall Street. Uh, it's about getting all the Americans together from either the left or the right, because um, we all have some common things and we all want to fix our country and it affects the rest of the world. Our, our country is being controlled by big money people that are so greedy that they're willing to destroy everything just so they can have some more money. But it's not going to be any value <laughs> if everything goes to like that. Um, so we're trying to save that. Uh, we're trying to get the Tea Party and the Occupy movement to, to communicate with each other and uh, push their legislators to, uh, to take money out of politics in America, to have it publicly funded so that everybody gets the same amount of money so it's not who's got the most amount of money for commercials that wins. It's we also want to uh, regulate Wall Street with prison sentences instead of money. You rob, if I rob somebody of $500, they put me in prison for 15 years. Uh, if you rob somebody of $500 million, they slap you on the wrist and take $100,000 from you. So it's really profitable to rob people of $500 million. If you were to go to jail for uh, 500 years from robbing $500 million, well, meet Bubba, your new life partner, uh, they, will do, they will be doing that less. I mean, there's always going to be an evil person out there too, but the, the, the rest of them, the most of them will snap in the line and we won't have all these problems we have uh, and our economy won't collapse. Money is a training thing. You, tra you know, you go, if you work a job, you're training your labor for this credit so that you can trade for other goods in the market. It's just a a value system, um, but it itself is valueless. Uh, you can't eat money. <laughs> coming back, all of us gathering together, feeling unity, feeling peacefulness together, feeling love in our hearts, maybe feeling pain, maybe we've lost someone, and we're here to transmute that pain, if that's what we're feeling. We're here to open our hearts to each other so that when we go back into our lives, our hearts stay more open so we can love each other more and more and create a new earth. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah! And when we do that, we heal each other. And I think that's why all of us come to Burning Man, to heal, to grow, to open, to unfold, to love, to create a better world for all of us.
shine our brightest and to do what we love and share that with each other and find each other and find other playmates and then create more magic and beauty in the world in infinite different ways. Just look around, everything is represented here. Look at the world that we can create. This is the paradigm. If you look deeper than the party, this is the new paradigm. This is, everybody can have this much love and abundance in their lives. It's just a matter of working together. Everybody comes here to be inspired or inspire. That's what we do. And then we go back home and then we create more magic in the world so that everybody can share it. Because not everybody can come to Burning Man, but we go out in the world and then we share Burning Man with the world. This is my best friend, Johnny Penny. She tried in a car accident two months ago. And this is my other good friend, right? Sprito. He died in his sleep two weeks after Penny. <laughs> this is the only way that we know how to get our message across to the other side. People ride everywhere. Every little thing means something to someone. It may just, I'm sorry. So very sorry, Star. Uh, maybe, maybe this person um, did something wrong to cause this person to die. I don't know. These, these things are usually in riddles. Everybody has their own way of explaining what's going on in their own life. And a lot of times, people don't want to put the truth down. You know, they don't want. To, they don't really want to let you know too much. They only want to put the one little message, whatever, whatever is going to make it to the other side, you know? Two hundred years ago, a mother in Africa, her son committed suicide. And she, on the outside of her shack, her, her, her shed, she carved a ladder. And she carved the image of her son and the date that he had died. 200 years later, a merchant went to Africa and bought that ladder at a marketplace for $80 and took it back to America and sold it to a collector for $80,000. When you bring a suicide letter from a Vietnam veteran, and we put it into the temple, I guarantee that it won't be made into a souvenir 200 years from now. And the only way you can protect that is by sealing it with fire. Going to see the ship. Going to see the sunken ship. Oh. 
feel like a pirate the one. I feel like a pirate. Get to the canoes. <laughs> Dude, let's go up. I see land with people. making music great that's what music's all about it's making music <laughs> whatever it takes to make it happen yeah. well daddy's and got his bike you want to ride we the just jumped note? on the magic carpet yeah yep. it's we've been lost for a couple hours it's no water food. nothing that's the worst on the back of the monkey all right yay right on, on the monkey's butt oh, oh my gosh thank oh you. thank you so much here i got that I'm telling the monkey's awesome coming here when my youngest son was 10 months old and my older son was four and now they're seven and three and we're still coming to Kidsville. It's the best place for families on the playa, I think. Yeah. I can you have my to magic step. Like so purple, now there has to be black. Or this red. All right. Now. I'm on the top. On the top. It's ready. It's better than Disneyland values are more important and more useful. You don't you don't teach them that they want they need to buy things to be happy. Here everyone just gives things. You give and you take. And there's no value of buy me this mom, buy me that. Like when you go somewhere like Disney World, they just want you to buy things all day long. But here the experience is what's important. I don't, I don't want to know what's going on where or when. If somebody hears something, they say, this is going on, and I go, OK, let's go. And I get in my car, and we take them. But I would like to just drive around and let the car take me wherever it wants. And then when I show up, where that's where I need to be. And I seem to see a lot of stuff. And then a lot of times, I'll be with somebody almost the whole time, and they'll show me their pictures. And I'm like, what's this? What's this? What's this? I'm like, it was right behind you. Didn't you see it? I told you to look. And it's like, it could be right behind you, and you don't see something as big as a giant unicorn, as big as a house, just because you didn't turn around or something. But I like the spot the spontaneity, the, just the happening of it all, and being surprised. I love the, the element of surprise. And basically the idea was uh, just to 
pretty much have a canvas for people to do art communally. So we, we express pretty much, ourselves, so you express yourself. Mm -hmm. We pretty much, uh, this would uh, bring them brand new birch cut, hand cut, set them up, and then just give paints to as many people that uh, wanted to create. Well, what it was was Burning Man said, come back and make what you can't have on the playa. And I have always wanted to be the leader of a cult, so I decided to make my own cult. And for a couple of years, it was a cult of one, and uh, I had fun. But then I started to meet people, and they were interested in joining on and following me because I had a good good things to teach and and they liked the, what, what I had to say so then I had got up to about 24 followers last year and then this year I was rejected my camp my theme camp was rejected so we came back as an underground cult and it's just three of us we got a th three three or four persons in the cult this year what I think is whoever owns this organization, be it Larry Harvey or whoever, wants to clean it up, wants to make it attractive to families, and then he's going to sell that shit to f***ing Pepsi or Coke or Disneyland, probably Disneyland, <laughs> because you know he's going to get paid in the end because that's what it's all about, and that's why it's all about that right now, and for him, I would imagine, and that's totally cool. I think it's awesome, and I love this, love this, and they're not going to keep me away. They're just going to make me more annoying. <laughs> No, it's in utopia. Utopia is silly. If you find me a perfect person, then I'll start believing in a perfect society. No, no, there's no perfect society. Uh, that, that's kind of a backwards approach to things. But I, I believe in. A, 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 but I believe that we could all live in communities that, that we, we deeply feel we belong to, and but that if, uh, but that afford everyone the liberty to be themselves. I think that's possible, both at the same time. And I think in some measure we have, uh, as a test case, uh, 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 are proving it. Ice cold chocolate! Stop for a chocolate break! Ooh, I like the hat. Thank you. I like the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so like much. some chocolate? I would love some. I'll let me give you some. Thank you. So love yourself. That's all, that's all I'm saying. You need to love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. And if you don't love anyone else or yourself, nobody's going to love you. What, what would life be without love, true love, true love from the heart? And if you're lucky enough to love everybody with your heart and you feel good and everything's great and you're as happy as you act, power to you, power, power to you, all the power to you. I'm happy for you. I wish everybody could be like that. What a world we would live in. But shit, if everybody could just be a little bit like that and understand and just love themselves, then we would be in this wonderful planet. Maybe we could make a utopia. an effigy and to burn it every year is a ritual so that for me I like to yell when they're burning it I like to yell and scream and let out all my frustrations and energy from the year before and then start anew and uh, it feels really good to just let loose and, and, and do it with 50,000 people at the same time and uh, the energy is just unreal when they light the man the energy is so strong and it's just a really great place to be up place right now and it's on a it's on a dead-end road with no brakes going as fast as it can so enjoy the ride because I don't think it's gonna last long 
yeah, there's lots of stuff that annoys me, and I can't read the newspaper. I don't watch TV. I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to know why people are being killed in other countries with my tax dollar. I didn't ask them to do that. I don't want to have anything to do with that. It's a messed up world. So you got to go out and have fun when you can and enjoy what time you have. Tell people that you love, that you love them. You might not see them. <laughs>